All right, let's look. It's weather for Weather Geeks time on this Tuesday evening. Another beautiful, beautiful day across the valley today with low humidity. Yes, it was warmer this afternoon, but with those dew points staying in the upper 40s and 50s, we didn't mind the heat too much. In fact, it was just a seasonable afternoon. 80, 82, I should say, is par for the course here in early July, and that's what we did at the airport at 4 p.m. today. After starting out at 52 this morning, I had 48 at my house this morning. I live in kind of a sheltered valley, and it tends to get a little bit cooler there on clear and calm nights. Nowhere near a record. That was back in 2001 on July 2nd, 2001. Got down to 40 degrees. That is cold for the middle of summer. In the meantime, across the country this evening, this is our next weather maker out here. It's producing a severe weather threat uh, this evening across the Corn Belt and heading down into the uh, Central Plain states. This will track east tomorrow. Now there's a warm front up here. This is the front that's going to usher in much warmer air and increasingly humid air for tonight and for the day on Wednesday. In fact, we can take a look at the uh, dew points. We're staying, ha still hanging on to uh, 55 at the Youngstown Warren Airport here at 7 o'clock, but the dew point up to 65 in Cincinnati. And look at Dubuque at 71. That's the ghost of Christmas future. All of this is heading our way for Wednesday. In the meantime, of course, we have powerful hurricane barrel. Uh, you know, it's only July the 2nd, and we are already talking about uh, a record breaker in terms of intensity this early in the season. This was a Category 5 for a time last night, and even though it's a Category 4, it's a high-end Category 4, Category 5 begins at 157 miles per hour, so it doesn't matter whether it's a 4 or a 5 at this point. It's impacts on Jamaica tomorrow will be about the same. We are expecting this to uh, cross over the island of Jamaica, which is right here as we go into the day on Wednesday. And this is still moving quickly, west-northwest at 22 miles per hour. So uh, tomorrow impacting Jamaica, and then what happens with Barrel? We, we think it probably crosses the Yucatan Peninsula uh, during the day on Friday. That's this part of Mexico right here. Cancun is right here. A lot of us have been to Cancun before. Um, after that, probably as a tropical storm, but perhaps as a low-end hurricane. Uh, it makes another landfall, probably somewhere in eastern Mexico or perhaps southern Texas as well. The question is, what happens at the end of this path? Does it uh, have impacts on the U.S.? That, the jury's still out on that. Let's look at the uh, what we call the spaghetti plot. It looks like a bunch of strands of spaghetti, right? Well, each one of these lines is a different tropical weather model. And you can see there's several strands or several models that do try to bring this up into Texas. And if that's the premise, if it doesn't just kind of die on the vine over the mountains of Mexico, if it does make this curve up into Texas, it may bring some, some rains to parts of the U.S. It would actually be good news if we had some rain in places like Dallas uh, next week. And whether this any of this moisture survives then all the way up into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley later next week, where it's way too early to speculate about that. But at this point, uh, the end of its life cycle may be over the mountains of Mexico, or if it passes far enough to the north, it may make it landfall in Texas. Back in eastern Ohio and western PA, we have a cold front coming our way Wednesday. With the building heat and humidity, there'll probably be some thunderstorms that try to pop towards the end of the afternoon and early in the evening. Best ingredients for severe weather, damaging wind gusts, large hail in the yellow area, that's the level two out of five risk for severe weather from Columbus on southward towards Cincinnati and Dayton into the lower Ohio Valley as well. But that being said, even though our risk category is lower in northeast Ohio and northwestern Pennsylvania, we can't rule out a feisty storm or two towards the end of the day tomorrow. Either way, it's going to get really hot and really humid on Wednesday. Air temperatures approaching 90, but the heat index will certainly climb above 90 Wednesday afternoon because the dew points, not only will they be much higher than today, they're going to be knocking on the door of 70 in some spots tomorrow afternoon. So it'll be pretty oppressive if you have to work outdoors or exert yourself outdoors Wednesday afternoon. But this cold front does roll through into Wednesday night. And the big question for the 4th of July is, all right, this front's going to stall, but where? And this remains a challenge for us. If it were just a standard Thursday, we wouldn't it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but it's the 4th of July Thursday. A lot of people are going to be out and about. Um, picnics, cookouts, fireworks, you name it. And so the forecast is a little more high impact than your standard Thursday, and it's a challenge because this front's going to stall. Is it going to stall over central Ohio, southern Ohio, or closer to Route 30? Um, closer to you know, kind of the Mansfield to Canton to Lisbon uh, corridor. That's our question for Thursday, and there's been a northward wiggle in some of the modeling today, including this model depiction right here that I'm showing you. Now, the lion's share of the shower and thunderstorm activity is still depicted to be around in south of I-70, from Columbus to Zanesville to Cambridge and down towards Athens. 
um, Marietta, places like that. But with this northward wiggle today, if that trend were to continue, we would increase our chances for wet weather across at least parts of our TV viewing area, especially maybe our southern areas. As it stands right now, the, the forecast you'll find on our website and the, and the Storm Tracker 21 app has a low end chance of a shower or storm in the afternoon, but we want to emphasize low end for now. As of right now, I would not cancel or alter outdoor plans for Thursday. Just keep paying attention to the forecast uh, for the rest of today, and especially into tomorrow as we get more high resolution modeling. You know, it's, uh, it's gonna be a close call between just a completely dry day and maybe a pesky thunderstorm in some places, maybe ruining a picnic in some places before the day is through on Thursday. Either way, our front, our old stationary front starts lifting back northward as a warm front later Thursday night into Friday, ushering in a steamier mass for Friday. And with the approach of this next system, I do think there'll be some thunderstorms here and there Friday, especially in the afternoon. Could be a couple of strong ones as well, but we'll get those out of the way in time for the upcoming weekend. Temperature-wise on the 4th of July, not as oppressive as tomorrow because we'll be on the northern side of that front for most of the day. So it'll be seasonably warm, but not with heat index values in the mid-90s. Uh, best chance for dry weather and some sunshine, probably morning and midday, even if we don't see any renegade passing showers or storms Thursday afternoon. The clouds might win the battle, especially in our southern viewing area. Thursday afternoon. So that's why I kind of gave it an okay as far as the forecast goes uh, during late afternoon and early evening on Thursday. Longer range thoughts? Don't see much in the way of substantially cooler than average weather, that is for sure. This is today's 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. So basically as we head into the second and third weeks of July, does it look like any sort of blowtorch? No, I do think the heat will probably be centered out west. Uh, Rocky Mountain states. That'll keep the core of the really intense heat out there, but does it look warmer than average around here? Yes, it does. No surprise there. We are expecting, as uh, you noticed if you watched Weather for Weather Geeks last evening, we are expecting a warmer than average July in the middle of our hottest summer probably in the last several years. That'll do it for me tonight. We'll have more updates on that 4th of July forecast, the upcoming weekend, and much more on future editions of this video on all my social media outlets and on our newscasts in the evening, 5, 6, and 11, in the morning, starting at 5 a.m. on WFMJ Today.